¿Cómo me escuchas ahí? Mal, bien, ¿me escuchas mal? Ponle mute a este computador. Hello, Catherine. <laughs> My family, my crew, <laughs> my friends. <laughs> my, my sister, my mom. <laughs> And you know my wife. <laughs> Hello. What? Hello, Liz. <laughs> oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> Hello, hola. That's not doing it, no, I'm on the phone for Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's good time for Colombians, so it's our responsibility to teach you. We also wrote some Colombian songs. You know, right? <laughs> one, of, one of them are, it's actually called Colombian songs. <laughs> Mm. Eh, listo, no vayan a tomar fotos con flash. Pues después de que ya van a So we should be starting Mafe. Mantener el audio para ver que si está funcionando. Um, 
Did it work? I didn't print it. Oh, good. Did you try reading on a tablet or something? No. Okay. And oh, you could make notes in there? Uh, there's a nice program for that, but it only runs on Windows. That's the one I do. Run it on the emulator for, for that. Thank you. 
Hello. <laughs> I told you he was going to he was going to get broadcast. <laughs> I brought my own journalist and everything. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we already have 15 people watching online. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> they will have to, to watch it in English. <laughs> we do manage though to, to show both the slides and the video, so at least they can see the, the pretty pictures. <laughs> Something to eat? No, it's fine. Cool. Just eat. Nothing party is supposed to be after. The leaves celebrating all the time. Actually, in Colombia, I think you can travel all over the country and you will always find a town that is in festivity. You know, that is like a local carnival for something. Carnival for the chicken, carnival for the potato, carnival for everything. I did read uh, somebody who once tried to um, eat 100% of his meals through three Washington, D.C. parties. Oh, really? Like a non profit, whatever, everybody has. If you search around, you can find them and just go from one to the other. Oh, really? All right, John, ready? I'm ready. Ready? All right, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this defense of John Gerigal and I'm Ben Schneiderman from Computer Science. And I'm very pleased to welcome so many of you uh, to join for this event and this supporter for John from many sources. The committee members are uh, Ben Peterson from Computer Science, Lisa Gatura from Computer Science, Catherine Faison from uh, HCIL and, and NUMIAX, and David Lovell. Uh, professor in mechanical so, civil engineering, uh, and I'm also pleased to introduce uh, Michael Pack, uh, who's been a very close supporter and partner in this project. Uh, uh, 
advanced transportation technology that has employed John and some of you. I guess we got some Cat Lab people here too. Yeah. Uh, so there's Cat Lab people and ACIL people. Uh, and there's John's family, who have <laughs> some travel far and wide to come join for this important occasion. Uh, John has asked that he's like to uh, broadcast this by Skype to some family. Or Google friends. Hangouts. On Google Hangouts, and someone taking care of that? Yeah, we already and have. I just want to ask the committee if they have any objection. This will be only the, the public presentation part. Is there any? Everybody on the committee okay? Anyone else have any concerns? Should be aware of that uh, this is being recorded <laughs> and so just the uh, I've asked John to speak for about 30 35 minutes about his work uh, during that time if there are questions that are clarifications you'd like to make please ask questions at the end of that we'll ask the guests to uh, ask questions as well um, briefly and we'll uh, then ask you to uh, leave and take some food along with you, <laughs> uh, and then the committee will meet and uh, ask John in greater depth about his work. Many of the committee members, including myself, have written comments on his draft manuscript, so we have already provided to John a copy there, and he's, John's already been working on revisions of uh, the manuscript. Um, and then uh, we'll ask John to leave, and the committee will Discuss and come back to John with uh, its findings, reports, and guidance. But are there any questions? Okay, restrooms are outside of the <laughs> left. We have an enormous crowd, which is a great pleasure for me. Uh, I always like to see, especially I welcome family who have traveled some from great distances to participate. It's really a very meaningful part. John's been an important part of our community for four or five years now as a full time scholar and he's one of those cheerful energetic people who's always ready to help <laughs> and so you should know that and you should hear that in the presence of everyone here and I welcome those who support John and who are interested in his work. Let's go to his work. Thank you okay. John. Thank you very much. I really appreciate all of you coming to support. I hear I have to defend against five so I broke my own crew so here we go. So yeah we are going to be talking today a little bit about my work on how to compare uh, data uh, structures, especially hierarchies, um, using information visualization. So for that, let me start by saying that we we all know, know about trees. We know that they are very useful to organize information. They are all over uh, our world, from our laptops, organizing our file systems, also including like just the brackets of, of, of basketball games. And even for very important things like organizing the tree of life by just grouping different organisms by how close they are according to their DNA. And because of that, there has been a lot of research done in things like how to visualize trees, how to navigate them, and also how to store them, how to compute things with, with, with trees. But the problem is that whenever you have more than one tree and you want to compare them, the task is actually more difficult. So that's actually the problem I set my work on. So just to give you a quick summary of what I have done, uh, let me give you a, the one minute version of my thesis. So five years in one minute, we'll go slightly. First, I started by comparing two trees. I wanted to know what had changed between two versions of a tree. And I designed in, with, the, um, with the support of the professor of design, Alter Bob Coleman, the bullet. That it's a visualization glyph that shows four different characteristics of change and implemented that in a tool called Treeversity that allow the, um, allows the users to find what has changed between two trees. They were quite happy with this, and uh, we developed some case studies uh, uh, that allowed them to understand what was happening on their data sets. However, they wanted to push it a little bit forward. And for instance, when we went to the Office of Management, Management of the Budget on the White House, they say, it's cool that you can compare 2012 versus 2013 and the budget of the US, but what if you also want to see what has changed for the past 20 years? So for that, we actually move forward and say, OK, let's try to extend this to comparing one tree changing over time. So for that, I designed the stem view, that it's a visualization technique for trees that shows not only the four characteristics of, of change of the bullet, but also the actual values of, of the nodes. So I'm going to show you how that enhance the most important nodes in the tree, allowing faster and, and more meaningful comparisons. 
And I implemented that on a tool called Trivial CD2 that runs on the web, and I'm going to be demonstrating in uh, some minutes. Apart from that, we also found that the users were really excited with this type of, of interfaces, but they were uh, sometimes uh, overwhelmed by uh, how to find those important changes. So we created, uh, we created this tool that reports in a textual way what the most significant changes in the tree. And um, in, in this report, they can navigate those changes and find what's the most important things with them. Now, to validate all of these uh, uh, explorations, I developed 13 different case studies with nine different agencies uh, uh, from different domains, from areas uh, as uh, diverse as uh, companies like eBay, uh, the Inter-American Development Bank, the CAT Laboratory, even my own company, DUTO, uh, and uh, organizations like the Federal Drug Administration, the National Cancer Institute, all of those to find strengths and weaknesses in our approaches and my approaches and trying to uh, enhance um, my techniques. So to start, let's begin with some definitions. So first, what is a tree? For us, a tree, a tree in this dissertation is basically a set of nodes and links that uh, express the parent to children uh, relationship. It's that hierarchy relationship where each node it's basically um, uh, has to be labeled, has to be uniquely identified in, in the tree, so, so we can do match between two versions of the tree, and should contain uh, node values that could be numeric, that are the ones that we are going to use for comparison, and also categorical attributes that are the ones we are going to use for creating the hierarchies. Now, now that we know that, that what the tree is, the, I classify the trees in three types, depending on how you build the hierarchies for them. So if you have a hierarchy, like thinking in the data from the US Census. So if you group the data by state information, then by county information, and then by city, you will get a nice tree that is a fixed tree, because you cannot put the city on top of the state, because it wouldn't make any sense. There's a, a strict hierarchy in that order. Now, if you can reorganize the different elements of the hierarchy, like in the case that you group by the gender, and then by ethnicity, and then by age range, then you have what I have, what I call a dynamic uh, hierarchy. So it may, it does make sense if you put ethnicity on top of gender, or if you put age range on top of all of them. So it's just the, the way you group uh, things. And then if you combine both approaches, then you get what I call a mixed tree. Okay. Uh, so now that you know what it's a tree, uh, how do you compare two trees? So I have defined and identified uh, five different types of tree comparison. So First, uh, supposing that, and this depends in if the tree has changes in structure, or what I call changes in topology, uh, and that's what I call type zero. So whenever you want to find what has changed in a tree, just by looking at what, what changed in the structure, that's type zero. Now, if you start looking at node values without changes in topology, and you, you start thinking of trees that are what I call aggregated trees, that is like, for instance, in the US federal budget, in that, if you start looking at the budget by grouping by agencies and then bureaus, the budget of the agency is going to be the sum of the budgets of the bureaus. That's what I call an aggregated tree, because the parent, the value of the parent is the sum of the values of the children. Now, if you have <coughs> a tree that is, for instance, an organizational chart for a company in which you have uh, the different people in the company and then the people that are under their uh, um, um, that are their employees, then that's a non-aggregated tree. And that's because the salary of the, of the boss is sadly not the sum <laughs> for the boss, I guess, and uh, not the sum of the salaries of the, of the employees. Now, if you take type one and type two, and you add changes also in topology, then you get what I call type three and type four. So that's kind of the, the, the playground for tree comparison. And for that, there has been a lot of work, especially in the related work, especially for type 0, and there has been substantial work also for type 1. Uh, however, um, there has been only one project for, to the best of my knowledge, that has tried type 3, that is whenever you have aggregated trees and changes in topology, um, but they, was, they were restricted in the sense that they cannot see, they cannot display changes in the inner parts of the, of the nodes. It will not work for problems in type 4, and also the choice of colors and techniques to represent the changes uh, aren't uh, the most efficient way. Other, there's a chair over here if you want to pass. So 
actually Triversity and the techniques I'm describing in here, they cover all the types from 1 to 4, being type 2 and type 4 like not covered in the previous literature. So uh, let's start with the first contribution. So as I said before, my first task was taking two trees, like two versions of the US federal budget, the budget for 20, 2012 and 2013. How do you find what has changed in there? So for that, we said to start working with it, we, to try to display those characteristics, and we found that there's too many things that you have to show to actually represent those changes. So, but the, and there are many approaches that you can use to, to try to solve it, this task. So say that you want to represent, you calculate the differences in the budget, and you just compute those differences, and you display them on a the table. If you do it that way, you will get some advantages, like, for instance, you can sort the different colors of the table, so you can sort by the relative change of each one of the accounts in the budget, and you can use color coding and different techniques and good uh, approaches for tables that will allow you to find pretty quickly what's the fast the the, the, the note that has changed the most in, in the mass the mass uh, the most in the tree. <laughs> Sorry. So, but the problem with using a table is that you will lose completely the context of the hierarchy. So you will not be able to see. If I know it's under a certain branch of the tree, and what are the changes inside that? So then there another approach will be to use our own uh, tree map visualization. If you do it this way, and you color the different um, boxes in the tree map with the amount of change using a nice color coding, you will be able to represent one characteristic of change, in this case, the percentage of change. And then you still can see the actual value of the nodes, and that way you can identify some of the changes in there. This will work pretty well to, to represent that, but it will be limited to just one characteristic of change. If you want to see the actual amount of change, uh, uh, it is not displayed in here. It cannot display remove nodes. If a node completely disappears in here, then the area for that will be zero. Then, you, then there will be no node in there, and you cannot see that it disappeared. And there's no way of seeing what are the changes in the inner parts of the node. Uh, on top of all of that, it will not work for non-aggregated trees. You have uh, something like, the again, the organizational uh, chart for a company, then there's no way you can visualize that with a tree map because tree map is for aggregated trees. So given that uh, we designed, we went with a node link representation, and we worked with Professor no, Audrabach Coleman from the design department, and we came up with the bullet that it's a visualization clip that effectively represents four characteristics of change. That's four, four characteristics are usually the relative change for the height. So the height of the bullets will represent the percentage of change. If it is, say, 25%, 20, 15, 10, and so on and so forth. And also the actual amount of change. And for that, we use the color. So the darker bullets will be the the nodes that are increasing the most in the budget. And we can also show uh, things increasing or decreasing for direction of change. And on top of all of that, um, combining the, the ability to show changes in node values and in topology, we can also show created and removed nodes using the border around here, the, the bullets. So these four characteristics of change. You can codify the bullet to represent things in different ways depending on the on the task at hand. For instance, you can say the height to be the actual change or the color to be the percentage of change. And all of that is customizable in Triversity, that it's actually the tool that I developed to implement this. Now, when you have two trees, like in this case, the way we build a, a, a div tree with the, with the bullet is that we take the two original trees. Since the nodes are labeled, then we can do matching between them. We calculate the difference between the different nodes, and then we display that difference in an union tree. That is basically a tree that aggregates all the nodes in there. Uh, for instance, this node in here, that is the node F, that is not present in tree number two, that's a remove node, and that's why it has a black border. Same happens here with node H, that it's a node that was created because there's no node H here under C. So you can see it in here as created node. And then you have this new node, you can leverage information like the node C is increasing, uh, and you can compare both in actual change and in relative amount of change. So 
As I was saying, I implemented this in a tool called Triversity. Uh, it's a tool developed in Java, and it uses uh, smart uh, multiple coordinated views to represent many different ways uh, the, the changes in the tree. Initially, or on the top uh, left, it has a tabular representation that is coordinated with the other views in which you can use the the advantages that I already described of the of the tables, like finding what are the uh, fastest changes node, and all of those nodes are going to be highlighted in the in the other views. Then on the top, it has uh, the original values of the of the tree uh, for the two versions of the tree that we are comparing. In this case, it's an artificially generated budget between 2011 and 2012. And then on this area, it displays the the bit. So it also uses smart animations and transitions to help users find what are the things that are changing in the tree. And we, of course, include uh, details on the man panel in here and uh, a control controls that help users to find what are the interesting things they want. One of the inter the most interesting controls we added it's the deep scatter plot. That it's a simple scatter plot in which we draw all the nodes in the tree by the amount of change they have, using the uh, for the x-axis the percentage of change and for the y-axis the actual amount of change. So by selecting nodes like this, we are selecting the nodes that are increasing the most in money in budget. In, the, in, in this case, we are uh, I'm showing. Um, the budget that different airlines spend in, in maintenance of their aircrafts. So these are the, the airlines that, are spent that increase the most their uh, maintenance in terms of dollars. Here are the, the airlines that increase the most in terms of percentage of change. So all of these duplicated their budget or more than duplicated. And these are the ones that decrease uh, the budget uh, the most in terms of dollars. So by selecting those with the smart animations, the div tree will uh, show only the nodes that, that match that those sort of things. So users were quite happy with this, and they were thrilled to be able to find interesting, insightful uh, information when comparing two trees. But as I said before, they immediately asked the question, this is great, but we want more. What, what happens if we want to compare more than two trees? What happens if we want to compare more than two years? So we want to see the whole history of the past 20 years of the US federal budget. So for that, I went back and created and the next version that it's actually my second contribution, that it's solving the problem of how to find what change in a tree changing over time. So before we have two trees, now we have one tree with multiple time points in, in over time. So for this one, I designed a visualization technique called the stem view. The stem view, it's an improvement over the bullet, uh, all, and it's an um, uh, area-based uh, visualization that shows the four characteristics of change of the bullet plus an extra one. So let me show you how that works. Again, uh, we are using uh, color for the actual change, yeah, the height for the relative change, and I'm going to explain how we build it in a, in a second. And then the extra attribute is that the width of these boxes, that each one of the boxes represents one node, is the actual is the ending value of that node. So by doing that, I'm going to show you in an example, you will see that, for instance, in the US federal budget, the agencies with the biggest budget occupy the biggest space in, in the visualization, uh, allowing uh, rapid uh, identification of the most significant nodes of the tree. Then we also show the direction, and we are still using the border for the created and removed nodes. So the way I built the, the stem view is that I start with an icicle representation. Uh, in here, uh, uh, the hierarchy is a little bit more difficult to understand, but basically, this is the parent node that is divided in these two nodes. Again, the width of these boxes is the ending value of that. So for instance, for, for this example, uh, it has two children, and one of the children is like maybe 75 percent of the of compared with the, with the second. <coughs> then these children in here is a split in, or it also contain two children, and this one in here contains three. So that's an ice cold representation. Then in the middle of that, I add a horizon bar 
that is basically a, a line right in the middle of the of, of these boxes that will represent the line of zero change. And then from that line, things going up are going to be increasing, things going down are going to be decreasing, and the height of this bar is going to be the percentage of change. So we use the scale, I use the scale. Else on the on the left, this is the U.S. federal budget, and here is the division between things that are on budget versus off budget, and the BEA category that basically says if something in the budget is discretionary, mandatory, or not. So the advantage of this again is that you can see that the discretionary and mandatory parts are way bigger than the net interest part. So the last step on the STEM view is that we color I color the the different boxes according to the actual amount of change in each one of the of the elements, allowing the, the representation of the five characteristics of change. So here is uh, how it looks, uh, on, for instance, on the U.S. federal budget. This is the full U.S. federal budget grouped by agencies in this level, and then bureaus in this level. And as I was saying, immediately you can see that the Department of Health, uh, Defense, uh, Treasury and Social Security Administration are the biggest agencies on the budget. Before we used to have around like we have like 400,000, 400 notes, sorry, in this tree, and with the bullet it get too crowded. And it was nice to see all the elements. I'm going to show a comparison in a minute, uh, but it didn't emphasize the biggest notes. So to give you a small demo, let me jump. <laughs> the risk of getting this to explode. Let's try a live then. So let me switch here for the broadcast. Okay. So in this example, and by the way, you can check this online on the website traversity.catlab.umd.edu. And this is an example showing the US the passengers flying in the US between the year 1990. Up to 2002, I think it's for this case, yes. Uh, we are looking only at the change of the overall number of passengers flying. And um, in here, you have a timeline representation. And in here, you're going to be seeing the different changes. So you can move the different years and see the change for those. But to get this a little bit more interesting, let me add uh, some components. So we can go to the hierarchy tab, and in there, at, for instance, the origin state. So we are going to divide the total number of passengers by the origin state. So by doing that, again, we immediately get to see that, for instance, California is the biggest uh, state in terms of passengers flying uh, through their airports, then Florida, and then, for instance, Illinois, New York, and Texas. Again, everything in here is coordinated views, so you can select one of the timelines and see what's the corresponding uh, node in the stem view. So you get, again, California, then Texas, and, uh, and Florida. All of these states increase the number of passengers in uh, between 1995 and 1996. And this case, this is North Carolina, that is one of the only states that actually decreased for that, for that year. So one of the interesting things in here is that overall, since 1991, the tendency of the number of US passengers was to increase. So we actually keep on moving, and we go up to 97. In actually 97, there were some states that went down. And we keep on going, 99, 2000. And then this peak in 2001, and that huge uh, tendency of going down is what came uh, as a result of the attacks of 9-11 in 2001. So one of the interesting things that you get to see in this example is that you will, I will, ha I will were expected, and actually the, um, um, our partners in the Department of Transportation were uh, excited to find that there were actually some states that didn't uh, decrease the number of passengers, but actually increased for, for that year. So if you see this small bar in here, that's actually Maryland. And the Maryland actually increased from uh, 9.68 million passengers to 10 million passengers. So we can analyze that a little bit further by adding, for instance, the origin cities. And by doing that, 
uh, we see that the main uh, city increasing was the city of Baltimore. We can come back, and then we get to see the biggest cities again. Here is Los Angeles, California, Atlanta, Chicago. And then there are still some of them that are increasing. So if you want to expand that further, then we can add some filters and say, I want to filter by absolute difference only those that are increasing positively. So let me put zero in here and then enable this filter. And then all the others are removed. And then you get to see only the uh, states and cities that are increasing, being Baltimore one of the biggest ones uh, for that mm -hmm. specific. Uh, mostly the states are decreasing, but then there are some states that are also decreasing. The filters applied for the overall tree. And that's actually, that coming from Ben actually help us to see the advantage of this versus, for instance, a tree map is that you get to see that Fort Lauderdale, Fort Myers, West Palm, all of them, all of those cities increase in a state that actually decrease in 2.49 million passengers. So the ability to see one node and still see the hierarchy uh, and, the, and the context to, to under, and compare all the changes in that area, it's the strength of, of Trivers. So actually moving a little bit further, these filters were quite interesting and they were, the, the users were really happy to see that. However, in most of the case studies that I'm going to describe in a second, in a minute, uh, I was driving the, the, the tool. I was working in a technique that we call the chauffeur mode, in which I was the one handling the tool. So trying to pass the, the, uh, the responsibility back to the domain experts, I developed a technique called the reporting tool. So actually, let me remove the filter and show all the nodes. And what I, what I did was to create this textual reporting tool that I presents in human readable form what are the most significant changes in the tree, just calculating simple outliers. And it allows users, for instance, to come here to absolute change and say, this is the only state uh, that decreased more than 6.79 million passengers. And then when, it, when the users hover over the text, you get to see the, the nodes that are affected. And again, to see the increasing one, so these are the 72 cities that increase more than 396 passengers. Now, if we want to explore that further, then users were able to just click on that, and they can see, again, the same techniques. So it's it's basically the same, the same concept, but they were happy to see that they could do it in such a simple way. And we got really good responses from that. So switching back to the presentation, if I can find it. Before we leave that, any questions about the demo? Great. I confuse you enough. Uh, so this is a comparison of the bullet versus the same view. Here we are looking again as our favorite example, the US federal budget, uh, 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 with the bullet and with the same view. First, we're grouping by the different uh, BA categories. Again, if the an account is net discretionary, net interest, or mandatory, basically uh, the government uh, this area is the only one that they can actually modify. All of the rest, of, as I understand it, all the unmandatory accounts are actually fixed, and there's nothing they can do to change them. So this is interesting, because when you group it like that on the STEM view, immediately you get to see that the biggest part of the mandatory uh, branch is the Social Security Administration and Department of Health. So if you go to be uh, President of the United States, you will have to balance these two increasing uh, huge accounts in the budget. Now, in the discretionary part, the only thing that can actually modify that it's like the biggest one is the Department of Defense, and I guess that's why everybody criticizes the spending on military. Well, not everybody, but there's a lot of discussion. Let's leave it that way. Uh, so comparing the bullet and the same view for this, you have to see that it's easier, and it's, it's simpler to understand the hierarchy in here. It's quite evident that you have three nodes, and that each one of those is divided in many nodes. In the, it's easier to see that in the bullet than to see it on the stem view, but when you want to see these most significant changes, all of them are hidden here between the, the mesh of, of bullets. So that's the main advantage of the stem view of the, over the bullet. However, there's a nice outlier in here that is hidden on the bullet, so whenever you want to find just uh, things like this, 
then you can use the, the bullet can become like a, a better tool. So they are both good techniques, and each one has its pros and cons. Um, and they, they, their usability depend on the task at hand, as in many, many problems in computer science. The one that you said that was written in Stampy was up the one that is orange with text. Uh, this one? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, that's, it, it will be something like this. And actually, oh, I see it's the longer, skinnier one. Yeah, but uh, I think it's not even it's not even being drawn because it's such a small budget that it, that it didn't have enough space. However, now that you ask, you can set up the, the stem view to behave like a bullet, and you say the width of each box I want it to be the same for all of them, and when you do it that way, then that outlier will stand up. So it all depends on on those characteristics. And for our case studies, we also found that sometimes you want to add an extra variable. To, to represent the width, and I'm going to show that in an example in a minute. So here is a presentation of the reporting tool, again with the, with the US federal budget. So I already showed it on the demo. Let me jump over this. And let me go really quickly over the, the architecture I developed for Tuber V2. Being a web-based application, and that is not common in the way that you develop information visualization tools, Usually, you worry more about the how you build the tool in terms of the concepts you're implementing that, than um, the architecture, because you just implement everything on Java, you load everything on memory, and then you work from there. When you're working on the web, the problem is a little bit harder, because you will have many layers. You have a client side and a server side, and you have to balance properly in order to obtain the smooth animations that you saw in the demo that I didn't break. Thank you very much. So the way I did that is that whenever you see a, a request to the, whenever the application see a request uh, on the browser, it goes to our main controller and it's, it's sent back to another piece of code uh, on the server that uh, generates some SQL queries and uh, goes to an SQL database where we have all the records from the data set. And those are in the ordinance of hundreds of thousands of records. Then that comes back a filter down to the information only need for the parameters that the user set in the, term, in, in, in the dimension of, of thousands of records. And then those are sent to the browser. It, are, they are kept in, there in, a, in a nice library for data management called cross filter. Uh, and all of them, all the filter, uh, filterings are done on the browser, not having to go back to the server and balancing the load and that's why when I was doing the demo, you saw that sometimes the application was doing the loading. That's when it's going back to the server. And then apart from that, it stays on, this, on the client and it's giving that, those fast responses. I believe this is a, a good architecture for further developments on information visualization tools for the web. So for my final uh, contribution, we're almost done. Uh, hold me a little bit more. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the 13 case studies that I developed with nine agencies uh, on domain experts in different areas. Here is a list of the complete uh, case studies with information about what version of Triversity was used, if we were using the chopper mode, or if the, the users were handling the, 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 the tool by themselves, and some characteristics about the type of comparison that we were doing. I tried to cover as many as the different uh, uh, styles of, of three comparison that I described on the early definitions. And we were using the multidimensional in-depth long-term case studies. That is a technique going in the human computer interaction lab that we believe is stronger to show evidence on how these type of tools can benefit uh, domain experts. So to give you an idea of one of our, of our uh, case studies, let me show you this. I'm sorry for the for, for showing it. <laughs> but this is what the people at the FDA, uh, Dr. Anna Sarfman, was doing to try to find how has changed the number of adverse reports for a specific um, drug. So they have uh, they have to control the number whenever you get, uh, uh, for instance, heart attacks and things like that. They get reports on how many people are getting uh, those uh, adverse effects for when they are taking a certain drug. So they are using a nice visualization called the sector map that is really good to show one year of those reports. Whenever you see something really red like here, those are areas of trouble. And they were really happy with this because they can list these numbers and just search for those and say, for 
this specific drug, there are areas that are critical. The problem was that they wanted to see how these things change from last year to this year. So that basically generates that's uh, last year and this this is this year, and they wanted to find what changed in there. And the only way they, they could do that was looking back and forth and trying to compare those colors and understand what has changed in there. So that looks like this in, in Triversity. Here, I'm highlighting two of the most interesting uh, insights that Dr. Sharkman got from our, our tool. Uh, the codification in here is a little bit tricky because um, they are using a very um, um, interesting index to represent uh, the number of adverse reports. <laughs> All of that information is in the thesis, but basically uh, the they thing that they were looking for are uh, big red boxes like this. Mm -hmm. And this pulmonary embolism and deep vein thrombosis, there are two new techniques, uh, especially the pulmonary embolism because it has the white border. It's a new adverse effect that wasn't present in 2009 and just appeared with a a lot of reports for that year. And they were extremely happy that they could find this in such a clear and simple way. So that's one of the uh, case studies that we develop, uh, that I developed with, with nine different uh, uh, agencies. Here is uh, the results. Here are the results of an exit questionnaire that I uh, sent the different domain experts, asking them about how they so the traversity and how understandable it was for them, and how easy it was to, to understand the stem view, the bullet. And basically, we are using, I, I was using a seven-point scale, uh, lighter scale. So things going from four and up are positive things. Things going from four and down are negative things. Uh, for instance, uh, question four, that is this one in here, is how they find, how comprehensive, comprehensible they found the stem view how comprehensible they found the, the bullet. And most of the answers we got in there were quite positive, and also we got quite interesting quotes of how they found, found the, the tool easy to use, that it was way easier to and faster to find insightful information with Triversity compared with the previous tools they have, uh, that the type of analysis that they could get with Triversity was where uh, uh, way too difficult to, to do with the tools that they had available, and that they had many patterns that were discovered using our tools. Go ahead. Were 100% of the comments in all 13 case studies positive? Uh, no. Oh, so this, is this a representative set of comments? Uh, or no. I made it look good. Uh, so I have to ask, I'm still the nasty question. You better post this kind of so sure. I have to ask you for more representative samples. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I oh, think you're right. I should have include more of the of the negative. So can, can you tell us what some of the concerns yes, are? of course. I mean, uh, the main um, comments on the negative side are were for a specific development of things. Like for instance, um, since the tool is such a generic tool for supporting different different uh, data sets, uh, whenever you are doing analysis for specific areas, like for instance for transportation, better labeling was always required. Like, uh, I, I developed special setups, for instance, for the US federal budget to show numbers that are so big in terms of millions, billions, and that. So they were requesting also that they wanted like units for, for, for their elements. Also, users were presenting some, um, you know, some concerns about the usability of the tools in terms of how easy it will be to, to use the tool to buy themselves. And um, for that, I, that, that was one of the reasons I developed the reporting tool, and they were quite excited with that. It was a quite funny uh, for ourselves um, uh, report that was that, for instance, with the FDA, when since it was a web application, we thought it would be way simpler for them to install or to use their tool because it's just launching a browser. However, because the way uh, public organizations in work, uh, they required to run the tool in-house. So they needed to install the whole thing in-house, becoming harder, actually, to, to use it than a Java application. So that was a, an interesting thing we found in there. Uh, also, for instance, with eBay, we had some issues with um, the total size of, of their data sets. We were visualizing the whole eBay category tree of products, um, 
Um, and, and that tree was over the limits of what Reversity could do. But that was the only case study that had that example. So that's that's a, a mix of, of the things. But yeah, the, you're completely right. You should have included that in here. However, in the in the terms of, of the comments they, they put in there, uh, I don't think there was there were many of those, but of course I, I collected many when I was discussing them. Thanks for that question. Um, so wrapping up, <laughs> finally. <laughs> so here are my three main, three main contributions, depending on how you want to look at the 13 case studies and if you want to split this in one or two. But basically, I developed uh, with the help of, of Professor Coleman the bullet uh, that it's a visualization glyph that, in a very intuitive way, uh, show four characteristics of change when comparing two trees. I implemented that on Treeversity and developed some case studies that show us that users were happy to find uh, changes between two trees, but wanted also to expand those concepts to comparing more than two trees at a time. So for that, I developed the STEM view, a visualization technique for trees, um, an area-based uh, visualization. I implemented that on a web-based application called Treeversity 2 and expanded those concepts, developing a reporting tool that is the process of navigating the most significant changes, uh, depending on what the user define as most significant changes on the, on the tree. And I tested all of these techniques. We used developing 13 different case studies with nine different agencies that show weaknesses and strengths of my approach. So with that, that's a list of, of my publications. Uh, all of these are the ones published. This is under review for this week, 2013. And let me please highlight that our paper in the 2013 TRD conference got the Greg Harrington Award for Excellence in Visualization Research, which we are quite happy about. And these are a list of or some tech reports that that we also develop. Sorry for the crush over that. And finally, if, if I may, uh, I want to take at least a couple minutes to thank everybody that have helped me in accomplish this dream of mine. Uh, first and foremost, my wife, um, partner, and boss, <laughs> and co-founder. Without her, I wouldn't be here, definitely. And she just complete me and makes me uh, be the person that is so happy to, to share all of these things. And of course, my family, and I'm extremely happy I'm here, and I'm going to cry now. <laughs> um, so you know how, you, how much I love you. <laughs> and of course, Ben and Catherine, your advice has been extremely uh, important for me, all the support and the, and, and, and the help you have given me during this, this time. I'm extremely valued that, and as well as all of you, the committee members, I thank you very much for all the comments and and um, the, the thoughtful advice that you have given me, Audra, for the, it has been great working with you, working on developing all of these designs. I hope this will be uh, an example for future developments with the HCIL. How we can develop nice things <laughs> that also are, are quite helpful. I hope you didn't have too many headaches <laughs> trying to convince me to implement all of those. And also, Mike, it was great um, working with you in the CAT Lab, all of your support uh, giving this. Um, at the same way, Carolina, it, 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 it was really important for me having you here when we, I first came to the US and you basically become my foster mom and introduced me to this fabulous world and becoming like Juan Carlos and Andrea and Ivan. All of my friends in here that support me the same way that uh, Fernando and Camilo and Dan and Andrew, without you guys, I wouldn't be getting crazy having to eat alone every single day. So having a good Colombian lunch it's really important for me. <laughs> so the same way all the people of the ACIL have learned so much about all of you guys, the faculty members, the people from the CAT Lab. It has been amazing for me working with such a crew of amazing people and all the 26 viewers all over the world <laughs> are watching this. Thank you very much. Thank you all. And all these are incomplete. So I guess I meet somebody, uh, all of you that came. And thank you very much. And with that, I thank you. And Welcome, any questions? I invite our guests to ask questions, comments, or offer data sets to go to work with John. <laughs> questions? 
What, what do you feel is left to be done? <laughs> well, I would like to see diversity being used everywhere. I mean, I think, <laughs> as I mean, coming from our perspective from the entrepreneurial world, I, I was always concerned that I didn't want that research just stay like on papers and, and just get something published and that's it. And that was something really nice about the ACL, that we care about solving real world problems. These techniques of using the milks and all of that. It was extremely exciting, exciting for me having to search through these 13 case studies. It was extremely hard. Um, it took me a lot of effort to actually get all of these partnerships and a lot of doors knock. Not all of them work the way I wanted. Um, I'm quite excited now that the that the CAT lab is going to keep support for that. So, so I would like to see Triversity to keep on developing. There's a quite list of future work in the thesis about, and I have been talking with DJ, that is the person that is going to be taking care of the project, about the different developments that could be built on top of this. Out of the results from the, from the case studies, we found that People were quite excited about the things that they could find with that. So I will be extremely happy just to see this getting used in, in different areas. So that's that's in terms of the of the general purpose of the tool. And of course, there's, um, there's a whole set of things that could be developed, develop, especially, for instance, on the reporting tool. I think it's a quite simple concept, but it's quite powerful. And adding like techniques in which users can add their own metrics to to find the data they care about, um, or just the labeling, that, that it's a problem that we face all the time, trying to get more information out from that. So so there's a quite a list of, of things in there. But uh, in terms of getting this being used, that, that would be kind of what I, I think will be the next step. And I think with the case studies and, and the CAT lab and the support, that there will, is, is, it is possible that that's going to happen. If somebody was to continue with this work, what would be that piece of advice that you would give this person so it would make their life easier developing a part of this work? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, there's a, a ton of things that, that you will have to, 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 see, to, to see that to advance. I guess one of the most important things is to listen. I mean, Listen to your users, trying to find what they really care about. Sometimes it's extremely difficult, extremely difficult. I mean, Catherine and I, we have been in many meetings trying to figure out what they really want. And sometimes they don't even know what they want. Sometimes you just don't understand what they want. Sometimes it's really difficult. So listening to that, also cooperating with different uh, multidisciplinary uh, people, that's extremely useful. and that's a, a teaching that we got from the again the entrepreneurial work. So again, working with Audra was extremely uh, um, um, amazing. It's the only work I, I can think for that because it gives you a new perspective and it helps you. I I started thinking, oh no no, this is overpowering the the visualization in here and all of that. That definitely helps a lot. So cooperating and listening to your to your peers, it's 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 very important and. Just getting the word out, like trying to get as as many examples that that the tools are developing are useful, and trying to to see how to make that work, and not not trying to find a, a perfect tool. Like we all know that everything has weaknesses, so listening to those and trying to find opportunities in in those areas. Okay, thank you, John, and thank you for all the attention. I I would like to move on to reserve time for the committee, but. Uh, uh, so I'll ask you to help yourself with some of the goodies. And, so I will uh, finish the broadcast uh, now. We need a little break for the 